Would you all stand as you are able? Over the last three months, we have together with our fabulous staff run this meeting house smoothly, taking on responsibilities, growing, not just surviving, but thriving in the spirit of love. I would like you to take a moment and applaud everyone else in this sanctuary. And now, if you would join me in welcoming home and calling back to the pulpit, the Reverend Kate Wilkinson. Thank you. And this, and this, this gift is from the congregation. In this time of prayer, may we bring into our circle of concern all those who through our prayerful intentions may be held by the inexplicable web of connection that links us together. May our love and prayers not be limited to ourselves or those near us, but extend to all our neighbors both those we know and those we never will. We lift up in our hearts and prayers members of this community, our loved ones and families. May our hearts be gladdened by the joys of this sacred community, and may we have the strength and compassion to hold the sorrows as well. We lift up in our hearts and prayers all those who are going without today, without food or shelter, without security or love. We especially lift up those who have lost their homes due to weather disasters and climate change. May those who are without not be without hope. We lift up in our hearts and prayers all those who are affected by war and violence, all those who are victims of the worst sides of humanity, those who are afraid, those who suffer from prejudices and hatred. We especially lift up all those affected by gun violence in this country. We pray that justice and healing make their way into these lives. <laughs> this morning we send our collective energy out from this place to create peace. And at this time I welcome you to name aloud anyone in your life or in your consciousness who could use a little of this prayerful energy. And it's okay if the names overlap as we call them out. Spirit of life, we offer these names to your care. May our prayers not be limited to words, but express themselves in action. And may we continue to feel the tug of the web as we realize and hold tight our connections to one another. Amen. Here's a reading about sabbatical, not mine, but it resonates by Adrienne Marie Brown. In 2012, I took a sabbatical and I realized that I wasn't holding my end of the bargain up, the sacred bargain. In a fractal conception, 
I am a cell-sized unit of the human organism, and I have to use my life to leverage a shift in the system by how I am, as much as with the things I do. This means actually being in my life. It means bringing my values into my daily decision making. Each day should be lived on purpose. This has meant increasing my intentionality about being with others. Adapting to the changes of life, yes, but with a clear and transparent intention to keep deepening with my loved ones and transforming together. I struggle with putting the phone down like most people in my generation are younger, but I am learning to savor the quality of time spent without it in real life with other people, <laughs> writing, being present. We're using the internet to build trust and connection rather than to echo chamber deconstruction and destruction. It has meant getting in touch with my body and feelings in real time and learning to express them. I am learning to engage in generative conflict, to say no, to feel my limits, taking time to feel my heartache when it comes from living in America, from interpersonal trauma or grief, from movement losses. It is meant learning to work collaboratively, which goes against my inner specialness I am socialized to seek achievement alone, to try to have the best idea and forward it through the masses. But that leads to loneliness and, I expect, extinction. If we are all trying to win, no one really ever wins. I am beginning to revel in the increased capacity that comes from working with and trusting others. I sleep, I center, I travel, I share. I have offered more room in my life to love, family, creating. Each day I feel more authentic and more capable. I don't experience failure much these days. I experience growth. At the collective level, this is the invitation to practice the world we wish to see. Yes, resist the onslaught of oppression, but measure our success not just by what we stop, but by how many of us feel and can say, I am living a life I don't regret, a life that will resonate with my ancestors, and with as many generations forward as I can imagine. I am attending to the crises of my time with my best self, and I am of communities that are doing our collective best to honor our ancestors and all humans to come. It's life work with benefits. I regularly check in, with my vision for our collective future and make adjustments on how I am living, what I am practicing, to be aligned with that future, to make it more possible. Barbara Peskin writes, one of the old ones stood up into the morning light and spoke to those who had come back to the river. Now we have come again to this place it is a good thing. My life apart from you is not as strong. Yes, I have danced and I have told stories at my own fire and I have sung to all the six directions. But when I am with you, my friends, I know better who it is in me that sings. 
This morning we stand together in the morning light after three months apart and I return to you refreshed and refilled by this sabbatical, knowing better who it is in me that sings. And I have hopes that you too have learned more about yourselves during this time, have had your own adventures, have had time to listen for your song. And now that we are all back in this place, or perhaps here for the first time, it is a good thing. It is good to be together, to be excited, to be curious about the world and each other. It is good to be interested in another person's story, another person's perspective, to want to get to know them. It is good to want to go deeper within ourselves, to really be in touch with our own perspective, our own beliefs and what it is that has shaped them. It is good to be in community, to be in a place where rituals happen, where life milestones are celebrated and losses are mourned. Our lives apart from each other are not as strong. I had an incredible sabbatical, by the way. I thank you so much for the opportunity and for your support of my time away. I spent time with friends and family, met twice a week with my personal trainer, Maya, who helped me focus on physical health and well-being. I deepened my meditation practice, took a pottery class, traveled to see friends in California, and the highlight, highlight of my sabbatical was a mindfulness walking retreat in England. Devon is heaven in the springtime, and I had the most amazing time there. It was everything I hoped it would be and more. I ended my sabbatical by meeting with my study group of other Unitarian Universalist ministers. We read two books for this spring meeting, Emergent Strategy, Shaping Change, Changing Worlds by Adrian Marie Brown and Parable of the Sower by Octavia Butler. Both women speak of emergence as an idea, a worldview, a theology even. It's fitting that we explore their ideas over Women of Color Weekend. These are two women of color authors who use nature and science fiction and community organizing as the focus of their brilliant writing. Brown says, emergence is the way complex systems and patterns arise out of a multiplicity of relatively simple interactions. It is another way of speaking about the connective tissue of all that exists. The way, the Tao, the force, change, God, life. Birds flocking, cells splitting, fungi whispering underground. Emergence emphasizes critical connections over critical mass building authentic relationships, listening with all the senses of the body and the mind. I've mentioned before that my role in my study group is altar builder. Each time we gather at Craigville Retreat Center here on Cape Cod, I create a centerpiece on the table in the middle of the room where we worship and meet and it becomes a visual anchor for our time together. This time, I brought things from nature that represent ideas in Adrienne Marie Brown's book. And I've brought them here this morning as well. Let me tell you about them as one way to think about emergence. You'll see on our altar this morning a fern plant and also some shells that have a spiral shape to them. Ferns and spiraled shells are a form of fractals. 
A fractal is a never-ending pattern that displays self-similarity, which just means it looks roughly the same at any scale. If you look at the tiny top of a curled fern, it is made of the same pattern as the large open base leaves. The center of a shell spirals in the same proportion as the largest part of the outer shell. Think about how often spirals occur in nature, the sacred pattern of the universe. What this teaches us is that what we practice at small scale can reverberate to the largest scale. What we practice at the small scale sets the patterns for the whole system. This means that in the backdrop of larger world and current events, how we treat each other matters. Matters a great deal. It means that if we strive to build a faith community, a town, a government, a society, a world with justice and peace and love at the center, then we must, in our one-on-one -on -one interactions, have justice and peace and love at the heart of our relationships. And that more importantly, we must actually love ourselves as a beginning. Because what we practice at that smallest scale within ourselves is the pattern that gets replicated at the larger scale. This means that our meeting house is actually an important practice ground for the world we dream about. It means that we can risk trying to be our best and most authentic selves with each other here, and that when we mess up, which we will, we do so in a place where we have already agreed to care for one another and to forgive each other and to try again, which is easier than messing up in a larger place that hasn't promised those things. It means that when we work on our own health, our own spiritual lives and inner strength, it is not a selfish act, but one that actually serves the whole. Transform yourself to transform the world. What if we saw the patterns of our own lives replicating in our communities? What if we felt connected to galaxies because we are all part of a spiral? You'll also see on the altar, if you get a little closer, mushrooms. These mushrooms represent mycelium. Mycelium is the part of the fungus that grows underground in thread-like formations. It connects roots to one another and breaks down plant material to create healthier ecosystems. Mushrooms are so powerful at transforming toxins that they can be used to clean up radioactivity after nuclear disasters. Mycelium is the largest organism on Earth. From mushrooms and the invisible network of fungus under the ground, we learn about interconnectedness, remediation, detoxification. What if we think of ourselves as mushrooms, taking in all this toxicity and transforming it into energy, into power. And finally, you'll see dandelions. Over the course of our three-day retreat, we watched the dandelions change before our very eyes. The yellow flowers opened and grew toward the light, then closed up at night. The dandelion plant responded to its environment with survival at its very core. The day I took it home, I left it on my porch. And the next day I looked outside and the dandelion flower heads had all changed into white puffy balls. 
Each cloud-like sphere was full of seeds. And attached to each seed was a tiny parachute that would allow it to spread far and wide in the wind. The entire dandelion plant has medicinal properties. They are often mistakenly identified as weeds, aggressively removed, but they are hard to uproot. The top is pulled, but the long taproot remains. From the dandelion, we learn resilience, resistance, regeneration, decentralization. The dandelion is a community of healers waiting to spread. What if each of us was a seed in the cloud of a dandelion, waiting for a young child to come and release us into the world? So now you know a few of the ideas from Brown's book. Let me tell you briefly the story of Butler's book, Parable of the Sower, which Brown draws on extensively for her own work in community organizing. It's a science fiction book, and I don't often read science fiction, but Brown has me thinking differently about the whole genre. She draws on Octavia Butler's work because her books are examples of the radical imagination needed to dream together beyond fear. All organizing is science fiction, Brown says. <laughs> Showing black and white people sitting at a lunch counter together was science fiction. Ella Baker said, this may only be a dream of mine, but I think it can be made real. The parable of the sower. Set in the future, the 2020s seemed further away when the book was published. <laughs> Society has largely collapsed because of climate change growing wealth inequality, and corporate greed. Many things are burning, they're on fire. The main character, Lauren Olamina, is a teenager growing up in the remnants of a gated community near Los Angeles. When the community's security is compromised, her home is destroyed and her family is killed. She knows she must venture out into the chaos of the world beyond her gated community. She packs a bag and travels north. Poverty and resource scarcity have deepened the divisions between people. Mixed race relationships are stigmatized and religious minorities are attacked. But Lauren thinks differently. She begins jotting ideas in a notebook. God is change, she writes. Consider whether you're a human being, an insect, a microbe, or a stone. This verse is true. All that you ch touch, you change. All that you change, changes you. The only lasting truth is change. God is change. As she travels and fights for survival, she goes deeper into her beliefs, exploring what is true about the changing world around her dreaming about shaping community around those ideas. What she is shaping is a new religion. She calls her burgeoning faith Earth Seed. Escaping from her burned out life, Lauren slowly creates a network of others who travel with her. If they are willing to pull together, trust one another, connect across differences rather than fear each other, if they are willing to share resources and learn together, then they are invited to join. She slowly begins to share some of her ideas from her notebook. The others are skeptical, but they listen. Some of the ideas make sense to them. Having something to believe in brings them comfort. Lauren knows that they are just pacifying her at first, 
But then, one day, the small band of travelers helps an injured stranger along their route, which is not something that happens much these days in this dystopian future. The man they help looks at them in surprise and asks, Who are you? Without pausing, one of the group says to him, We are Earthseed. Brown says, Science fiction is simply a way to practice the future together. I suspect, she says, that that is what many of you are up to. Practicing futures together. Practicing justice together. Living into new stories. It is our right and responsibility to create a new world. What we pay attention to grows, she says. And I think it is healing behavior, she says, to look at something so broken and see the possibility and wholeness in it. What we pay attention to grows. So my plan is to keep paying attention to the things I paid attention to on sabbatical. Spiritual and physical health. Relationships. How I want to be in the world, not just what I want to do. What nature is teaching us, if we actually pay attention. I'm going to switch it up a little. I'm going to hand those out on people's way out because I'm mindful of the clock. Is that all right? Thank you. <laughs> so on my three months away, I began each day by picking a card from a deck of cards that I had made. On each card was either a picture or a quote or a piece of advice, something to pay attention to that day, to think about. Without a work schedule, the card gave my day a focus, an intention, a center. And I tried to let each message sink in deeply. Sometimes it was just what I needed to hear. Sometimes I shared the message from the card with other people that day. And sometimes it was just what they needed to hear. Each day should be lived on purpose. Brown says. What we pay attention to grows. Transform yourself to transform the world. Creating and then choosing these cards was such a deep and joyful part of my sabbatical that I wanted to share the practice with you and the cards. So I have brought them with me this morning. And on your way out, while Brenda plays our wonderful postlude, I will be handing you each a card. Your card will be random, like how I chose them out of the deck each day. Hopefully the message will be meaningful to you on your journey. If not, then maybe at some point in the future. Or maybe you'll pass it on to someone in your day and it will be meaningful to them. And there are more of you than I expected, which is an awesome problem to have. <laughs> if, if I run out, I think I have enough, but if I run out, I'm going to take your address. And even better, you're going to get a card in the mail. Because <laughs> getting mail is really fun. <laughs> One of the old ones stood up into the morning light and spoke to those who had come back to the river. Now we have come again to this place. It is a good thing. My life apart from you is not as strong. Yes, I have danced and I have told stories at my own fire and I have sung to all the six directions. But when I am with you, my friends, I know better who it is in me that sings. Let us sing now together hymn number 1017, which is in this Singing the Journey book. <laughs> 